So I'm David Ng. Um, I live in Toronto, Canada, and I'm, uh, I teach and um, I'm uh, finishing my PhD at Alta University in Finland, so it's a little long to leave sometimes. Um, and I've also been uh, president of the International Society for the System Sciences, so um, I'm, I'm deeply involved with the systems thinking community. Uh, this is a continuation of work that I presented last year at Purple Sock and also uh, the year before at PLOP. So I finally got to the point because the other two pa the papers, I keep they were major works to get there, and it was like there's stuff coming, there's stuff coming, and so it's like now I've actually gotten somewhere. So uh, there is a paper. Um, excuse the 47 pages. Uh, the paper is in the uh, proceedings for this conference, and the, it's also and the presentation are downloadable on my website at coevolving.com. So you can always go back and um, and get all of this. Uh, so quickly, uh, what I want to do is go back to. Uh, so the name of this talk is Pattern Manual for Service System Thinking, and so there's two parts of it. What do you mean by Pattern Manual? And secondly, what do you mean by Service System Thinking? Right. Uh, so the pattern manual goes back to 1967 at the foundation of the Center for um, uh, at the Center at Berkeley, and I'll talk about service systems. I'm going to talk about taking the Alexandrian example of multi-service multi centers and extending it into services. <coughs> um, then, because things have happened, there are methods that have clarified since 1973. In particular, they show up in the Battle um, Book. Um, and I'm proposing a new format that amplifies, re-philosophies, and reinterprets the prior docs associated with Alexander. Um, so I, I, uh, a retiree from IBM, I worked 28 years at IBM, and pattern language used quite a lot at IBM. So there's a lot of experience in the methods there. And there are things that are done in physical space that aren't necessarily done in social spaces or in other interactive spaces. Uh, so there's some adjustments. Uh, I guess just close off quickly that this is not uh, intended as an independent sort of thing. I feel like I'm back in 1967 again, starting over. So we'll go quickly over uh, over this content. So uh, at the founding of the Center for Environmental Structure in 1967, it said, um, let's go to this. The format says, anytime in the context exists, a certain problem will arise. The stated pattern will solve the problem, and there should be fighting the context. Um, now, it's not the only solution to the problem, but unless uh, the pattern or equivalent provided the problem will go unsolved. Uh, I'm looking at this from the context of not only Christopher Alexander, but at the same time at Berkeley there were two other people. One was Horst Riddle, who created the problem, the, the idea of wicked problems, mm -hmm. and the other was Wes Churchman, who was at, um, who was at uh, the business school, uh, he was uh, doing research into, um, with NASA scientists, and he was a president of the society that I was president of. So the system thinking community kind of, so we've got Alexander going this one direction, we've got Riddle going another direction, we've got Churchman at the same time. Okay, so what do I mean by service system thinking? Um, since 2007 or thereabouts, we've had a lot of work on uh, what we call service science. This initiative started around 2003 at IBM to follow on uh, from computer science. Essentially, IBM was telling universities, the students who graduated don't have the skills we want to hire. And, and the uh, university said, well, IBM, what do you want? And it's kind of like, we don't know. Your universities, you figure it out. Um, but what it came, the, 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 the clue that we had was back in the 1960s, IBM said the same thing. And the university said, the math department said, we do that. The philosophy department says, we do that. And IBM said, no, that's not it. And it turned out with this, this field <coughs> called computer science. So if you were in 1950 and you said you're doing computer science, someone would say there's no science in computing. So now we're in the same situation where people say, well, we're in a service economy, is there a science of services? And IBM is saying, well, no, there is a science of services. We're at the same point that we were with computer science in the 1960s. So since then, um, since 2007, there's been this idea of service science. There's some uh, definitions here. Um, the key point is that service system can be defined as a dynamic value co-creation, configuration of resources, people, organization, all sort of stuff. But the key idea that we need to deal with when we deal with pattern language is interacts. This is an interactive thing. So if you're looking for services, so you take Google Docs, okay, um, you interact with that. It's not like a building. It doesn't exist anywhere. So how is it different when you're, when you're looking at something that's, uh, that's non-tangible? And there's a whole series of literature in services that's kind of culminated, and, and there's now there's journals on service science. So back in 1967, this is from the Multi-Service Center's book. Um, 
And, and so people, when they work on pattern language, they often focus too much on the patterns. It's the language and it's a network of things that you want um, that's important. Um, pattern language is interpreted to have three uh, types of help. There's some unique features of each building. Uh, it tells which patterns to consider first and which you consider later. So for him, he started at the top and went to the bottom. Now, if you're thinking about these things not in physical space, does it make sense to do top to bottom? What's top mean in Google Docs? Right? It's like, no, my document's in there, and it's like in a network of things, so maybe that's a, a little change. But it does tell the pattern which ones go together, so you think about how some of these are collected and used at certain points in time. So you don't use necessarily the whole thing. So I'm going to go from an Alexandrian example into services. Uh, so in 1979, and this is a timeless way, I think, um, each pattern, uh, has, so we have a rule, context, system of forces, and configuration. So, you're, so the simplified version is solution problem context, but actually you start working on it, it goes context, system of forces, which a lot of people don't have problems understanding with the system of forces, and then configuration. Okay, there are three examples, and these are in the paper. Um, and so uh, the multi-service centers, this was an, uh, a, a community center in Brooklyn in 1967 that was being constructed. I've taken three patterns out of it. Um, let me, because you can't read this because it's small, I actually pick one of them so I can talk about how we do this. Pattern 32 was child care position. So you have people who are homeless, they're coming into a service center for um, uh, psychiatric services, medical services, social services, these sorts of things. There's a child care position because they have kids. So um, let's talk about, <coughs> and, and I, what I've done is I've, tr I've broken down the Alexandrian form into a more form-based way. So there's a pattern name and a headline. Child care position, the child care station is visible along the path from the entrance to the services. The completion of larger patterns. So in the cascade, there was seven, which was above entrance location, and there's ten, uh, which was above open the street, because both the child care position is, is contained within the constraints of the entrance location and the open the street. The range of context, and this is where people sometimes go think about context. If you go back to the multi-service centers work, it's pretty clear that there's a range of contexts where this works. So when do you want a child care station? Is it any building where mothers have prolonged business? So this could be a supermarket. Ah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, there's a uh, problem to be solved, uh, and system force that arises when small children are left off the care centers, they're extremely anxious. You want to create circumstances when the child decides they want to play in the center. And the solution, the configure of abstract spatial relational forces the child care station should be on the path of the building entrance, and so it takes that. Then you've got the completion of smaller patterns, because you're working down the cascade. So within the child care position, there is child care context. Okay, so that's how the pattern language works. Now let's take that uh, a little bit and flip that, and let's say you don't focus on the physical space. Let's focus on what's actually happening as a service. Okay, so this is a, um, again, three uh, uh, that I put, and I'm going to put it larger here for you. So the proposed service looking pattern is, um, is like this. So I've taken the child care position and said, let's look instead at the service. The service would be minding children. Okay, I'll call that the pattern name. Um, but divide this off into three parts. The voices on issues, which is the who and the what. The affording values, which is how and why. The spatial temporal frames, which are where, when and where. So. Um, if you state this, the voices on the issue, so you have an issue of minding children, and how do you satisfy that? For a client, what services are available to me now are on appointment. For a parent, what do I do with my kids when I'm busy? For a child, what do I do with my parents? Now, the other thing, I'm, I'm going to go back to the slide <coughs> a little bit, is that these are not one-to-one. -one. And so here I have three different services, and this one bleeds over this one, and this one bleeds over this one. Okay, so it's, there could be a many-to-many -many relationship down here. Um, the how and the why, affording values. Uh, what are the values? Leaving a child in a supervised play area, so the whereabouts are known. Availing distractions for toddlers, routines, so coming to the parents less mature. And the spatial temporal frames. Uh, these are not physical frames. These are the are, are, um, human-centered sorts of, so like one of the things is about the perception of time. We're not talking about clock time, we're talking about human time. So five minutes when you don't know where your child is is a really long time, right? Uh, facilities and programs are known to both children and parents in advance of appointments. You have the containing systems. 
So the containing system for mining children, there's an extended family, schools, and community workers. So the multi-service center doesn't necessarily need to take care of them. It's a school program, and they're in school, and they take care of the mining children. The containing, contained systems could be other parents in the multi-service center. So that just arises because they show up and there are other parents there. So there's, a, again, the idea of, of larger and smaller systems. Now, mapping these, so I'm giving you an example. Um, I, 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 these, the, here's the Alexandrian orientation. These are for production systems. And what I've done is done a proposed format of service system thinking, which in effect maps them, um, but there's differences. So an example is a pattern name is a place or spatial feature, phrase is a noun or adjective noun, headline with an essence of a problem. The pattern label here is interaction phased as a, part, as a participle. So minding children is not, it's not a child minder or a child minding, it's minding children. Because you want someone to mind children, that's the interaction you want. Um, the completion of larger patterns, we have that. Uh, in system thinking, containing systems are actually slower and larger. This is in the anarchy literature as well with that. Uh, the range of physical context can turns into social temporal frames. The problem to be solved becomes voices on issues. Solution configuration of forces becomes a 40 values, and you get a smaller one. Now the trick is that when you actually look at this, and I'll continue with this in a moment, is these are not done in the same order that Alexander does them. And the reason that you don't do them in the same order goes back to before our, um, Alexander, there was a book called Problem Seeking, which was about architectural programming. Architectural programming is finding problems worth solving not necessarily solving the problem. So at that point, they said architecture is problem seeking, design is problem solving. I'm orienting away from the problem solving part, going back into the problem seeking part, and that's why I use the words here, um, issues, which are from Riddle, um, and trying to figure out which problems we want to solve. So since 1973, um, um, this is, uh, I guess I've done this in a previous paper, but this is the way that uh, Alexander did the, uh, the Aishin project that is described in the battle. Right? So he has methods, he has a pattern language of the community, the construction budget, and then the reality of the land. Uh, for time, I'm not going to go through those. But I want to note that in the software development community, we have the same sort of thing happening in agile development. So we have the writing the user stories, which is behavior-driven development. We have the scoping, which is the estimate of the cost, and then we have reviewing iteratively, which is like working on the land. So the, in the software development community, they've done similar sorts of things to what they've done in the architecture community, and it's an agile, but we don't really talk about agile because it's split off, but it's actually the same sorts of things that are happening, the same sorts of principles. Um, in the battle book, he talks about system A and system B. Uh, in Software development, we talk about waterfall methods going to agile. So there are these sorts of things about how they change. Um, for the reality of the land, for example, um, Alexander Cost is again drawing abstract layouts um, and adjusting the plans to the wholeness on the real site. So he puts up the flags on the land. In software development, uh, you, you don't want to do divide and conquer. You want to collaborate for learning. So you have the whole software team actually working on real code that you show the users. So these sorts of things get picked up in the software development community. Uh, okay, the new format, uh, there's some adjustments. <coughs> so let's amplify some things. What does Alexander do that I really like and uh, can apply in system, service system thinking? One is shared meaning on the situated. So actually going on the land, putting the flag, that, that's really good and that's, that makes it less of an abstract thing. Um, there is system thinking and complexity. Uh, on my blog I've extracted this one article um, uh, from 1968 called Systems Generating Systems. And so uh, when I've been reading this, what I'm reading into it is that Alexander was a systems thinker. He needs a few more system thinkers around to help him. Um, the third one is separation of method content for the development process. And this says the timeless way of building and the pattern language are two halves of single work. So you need both of them together. Rephilosophization. Okay, we need to move from structuralism to alternative stable states. The, the idea is uh, you get into an uh, issue of the criticism of teleology, which Alexander does to a certain amount, and I amount through Bateson. Um, there's been a lot of work on teleonomy and regime shifts. Um, regime shifts are used in ecology now. Um, 
moving from the idea of dwelling to journeying, <coughs> when people read Heidegger um, and they think about Dasein and these sorts of things, is they tend to think about being in a building as a static thing. What you should be doing is thinking about being in a building while you're moving through the building. Okay, and so journeys, you're living over time. Um, finally, the idea of semi-lattice uh, and moving to a meshwork. If we're moving away from the physical spaces, do we need to restrict it that everything is always top down? You may want to do it as a network, and if you do it as a meshwork, and this is work that's done by uh, Tim Ingold, um, his idea, and he, he's done studies of the, uh, uh, of the Sami people in Finland, is that you don't exist when you're standing there. You exist when you move and you leave a line behind you in the snow. Mm -hmm. Right? So putting time back into this uh, creates a meshwork, which is not a network, but it's actually people's lives interacting over time. Um, okay, reinterpretations. Um, move from problem solving to issue seeking, um, and this goes back, I was saying, with the architectural programming. Uh, we take in the Riddle and Weber, uh, and we go with problem structuring methods, which include Peter Cech's and soft system methodology. So it's a different orientation uh, where you want to first uh, get the problem, figure out which issues you want to work on, and pursue those. And uh, I'm working now with, uh, with Ian Mitroff, who's created the idea of a type 4 problem. So type 1, type 2 errors are from statistics. Type 3 is solving the wrong problem precisely. Type 4, we seem to be running a lot of problems with, is people deceiving you, and, and he uses this um, Thomas Pinchon quote, when they control the questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. So we need to move on this towards uh, issue seeking. Secondly, moving from quality of wholeness to interactive value. Uh, this is why the paper is so long, because I'm down in reading uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and things like this. Uh, we start with quality without a name, uh, the 15 geometric variants have to go. Uh, so in services, we clearly separate the value from the outcome. So Google provides you with a service, which you like or you don't like, you know, is it valuable enough for you to pay for it? Okay, there's an outcome, which is you have your document there, would you pay for it? Like there's a separation there of, of the outcome, which is a document being there and values. Um, interactive value, the whole literature on that, where enjoyment takes place over a period of time, it's not a single point of time. And you, in service systems, there's uh, ideas of use value or value in use and exchange value or value in exchange. So yeah, from economics, there, if, you, um, if I have a uh, mobile phone, there is a, a value that I have, which is I use it, um, and that's the, that's the uh, use value. There is a value if I sell the phone, right? So these sorts of things come into play. Uh, finally, um, I don't like the idea of anti-patterns. Um, and if you start looking at them, because uh, originally it had this idea of dead patterns leaking out, affecting other patterns. Um, and then the original article was that, uh, on anti-patterns, was that anti-patterns are non-solutions and it should be coupled with patterns and pairs towards problem solving. And I'm looking at problem seeking about problem solving. Uh, Tim Ingold has the idea of wayfaring. Um, the way he describes wayfaring versus transport, which is destination oriented, is the difference between a maze and a labyrinth. A maze has multiple ways in, multiple ways out. You get in there, you get blocked, you get confused. <coughs> A labyrinth has one way in, one way out. It's the same thing. So why is it interesting to be in a labyrinth? It's because you're enjoying the experience of wandering around while you're in the labyrinth. You can find your way out, just go back, just like everything leaves it out. But the idea of experiencing as you're working through it um, is important. Okay, uh, I'll just uh, close off on, uh, on this. Uh, this pattern manual is intended as an initial position for community of practice. Um, we have to be careful, and this is, uh, so Michael on behalf, he's here. Uh, I've been working with Ward Cunningham on Federated Wiki. Uh, so the original 253 patterns became frozen in time. If we want something that's going to evolve over time, <coughs> we need to do it um, uh, online. Um, and there's a, a Federated Wiki associated with it. And as soon as you do that, you get into the design, design and acquiring systems, which is Wes Churchland's work. So how is it that we design the system that people can have multiple perspectives and what is, what is truth? Um, it goes into dialectical positions and, uh, and ways of uh, designing an acquiring system. So that's, um, that's the presentation. Uh, I welcome you, and this is intended as an initial discussion, um, so it, it's a position. The, the, the net is that um, Alexander has been oriented towards production, okay, and a production system. 
But if you look at today's economy, 70% of the economy is service. So what are we doing about that? Thank you. Again, have one minute for questions, remarks, comments. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was very intense. Thank you. Thank you.